Um, let's I'll call this meeting to order. Uh, let's do a roll call. Let's start with you, Jan, and we'll work our way around. Jan Diamantine. Jan Diamantine. Dave Workman. Linda Zedrick. Rick Barnett. Cindy Kirby. Ron Sell. Okay, and we're missing Anna Creel, and I don't know where she is, so we'll see how that goes. Okay, um, have you had a chance to look at the minutes from the last meeting, February 21st? Were there any concerns? I didn't have any. Okay, can I get a motion to approve the minutes of the April, or the February 21st meeting? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from the February 1st meeting. And a second? I second the motion. All in favor say yay. 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 All opposed? Thank you. Okay, time for discussion. We're going to start with, and he's ready. He's turning on his microphone, starting with city updates. I think it's ready. <laughs> uh, I got a little bit for city update. We completed uh, submission of the local government grant. When I say we, I mean Sierra. Um, she did a, hopefully a great job. We'll see. <clears throat> um, technical re review will be taking place over the next month or two. We'll keep you guys updated on that. Uh, completed submission of the Oregon Historic Cemeteries Grant. Um, successfully passed the technical review. Scoring will take place on May 8th. This grant offers a possibility of $8,000 toward headstone repair and rehabilitation. Um, the bollards were all installed at the skate park, so I believe that fence project's completely done. Um, I, I think it looks good. I don't know if any of you guys have had a chance to take a look at it. I think it'll help out keeping people out of the areas they're not supposed to be with, you know, vehicles. Um, parks and trail maintenance is ramped up for the spring and summer. We started, you know, doing the mowing and <clears throat> spraying and everything that, that comes along with, you know, the vegetation taking over. So uh, <clears throat> one of the big things on here, code enforcement notified um, management at Rite Aid for their sidewalk and trees that are in front of their property on Oak Street. <laughs> Um, 11, three of 23, gave them a six month window. Nothing's happened as far as getting the trees out and getting the sidewalk repaired. So we were coming up on the May 3rd date and no progress has happened. Um, Kevin was gonna take the next steps, but with a little bit of Ron's guidance, he got a hold of the, the actual property owner, Rite Aid leases the property from Safeway. And with a big corporation, it's always hard to get a hold of somebody. But he got a hold. I think he left messages with the person. I don't know if he's heard back. Do you, have you heard anything, Ron? Uh, to my knowledge, he talked to him, and they were going to put okay. a game plan together and figure out how to get the trees removed. Okay, awesome. But I haven't heard any, any more than that. Okay. Um, the only thing that's not on here that I wanted to update everybody on, I had a, um, a lady call, and I, I don't have her name offhand. She wanted to do a... A kind of a plant walk out at Mark Slough and go over it with, I think she's in some type of club and go over all the different plants that were along the trail. She got a hold of me and asked when we would be spraying or mowing. And with some coordination with the, the crews, we held off until it'll be next Monday, the 22nd. So she had time to do her, I believe her walk was happening today. And I don't know how big of a group it was. So I have her information on my desk. I would plan to reach out and see how that went for her. But we held off so if anybody's out there and thinks it's getting a little overgrown that was the reason we just held off for a couple of weeks so she could complete what she wanted to and then we're going to do the mowing and everything we need to after that so i don't have anything else if anybody's got questions let me know great uh, it's great that you uh held off and let her do what she did and i just want to say sarah that's a that grant is a, a beast so thanks for your work on that i think rod has something to say there too yeah, I just wanted to point out that's another use of the city trail system. People use it to access other activities and other, other clubs. Yeah. yeah. So it was nice that she reached out and we could accommodate and, and kind of hold off for a little bit so she could get her activity done. Perfect. Any other comments? Yeah. yeah. I, I wonder if Rite Aid or its corporate owner um, is going to be encouraged to replant trees. I know that the ones that are there are in um, very narrow openings in the concrete. But I think I remember that Rite Aid has um, good sized beds on the opposite side of the sidewalk. So they could plant trees there. 
they could that would be more of a engineering technical review type deal that deals with yeah the... we'll look at it where we have authority is in in right away we can tell you to plant street trees and we could we could look at that and ask them if they'd be willing to plant trees but i don't really have any mechanism to tell them that they would plant trees uh, if it's not within our right away all we have is a street tree policy so uh to go any further than that i'd have to ask real nice so we we will we will talk to them when we get to that point it's Thank probably you. a little convoluted because Safeway owns the property because there used to be the Safeway store there years ago. So, um, okay. Anything else on that item? UDV presentation. Who's going to do that? Looks like it'll be me. So, um, starting last year, um, ODOT planning approached the city and asked if we would be willing to participate in what's called an urban design verification project. What that is in short is basically a planning project with inside, you know, ODOT calls it urban design verification because it's typically most of their highways aren't in urban settings. So basically we're looking at the urban setting, i.e. Highway 34, Highway 20 corridors uh, as they go through Lebanon and the whole point of that is to see, uh, do we have enough safe crossing um, locations? Do we have bike lanes available? Uh, and also how is pedestrian connectivity? Uh, so we went through that process with them. Uh, it was a public process. They held, I believe, two um, different public sessions where they went out and asked the community, hey, what, what do you see as your big issues on this? And this is also in your packet. This is what they, they uh, did as far as a PowerPoint. I won't go through the whole thing, uh, just to kind of give you a feel, but the whole uh, actual final uh, verification is now on our website. Um, so that that is up there for everybody to view. So walking through it, uh, you know, they went through, we went through different iterations with them on uh, do we do lane closures on the highway to provide bike lanes and things of that nature. and. And the answer was really no, we can't do that. I mean, uh, from a traffic safety standpoint, that just, that wouldn't work well. Um, you know, we looked at Main Street as their parking that we could take away on Main Street to create a, a bike lane. And again, looking back at it, there really was no mechanism to do that. Um, so what we ended up with, and then you'll see if you get online and look, uh, there's a multitude of different projects in there. Uh, we used, uh, like Fifth Street as a north-south, uh, what we call uh, a parallel route to the highway for bikes and pedestrians. Uh, there's locations in there where they've got for, uh, I'll call them rapid flashing beacon crossings um, across the highway. Um, they have many different ideas about how they're going to put bike lanes on the highway. Um, I think the one thing that stuck with us is, um, even on the highway and painting chevrons and the intensive painting that would be required for it, um, they, their, their highway side said, well, we don't have the money, we wouldn't do it, but it'd be up to Lebanon to do it. And it's, well, we're in the same position. So the reality of a lot of the projects that you're gonna see in there aren't gonna happen unless we do it with, a, with another project that we've got lined up or there's some grant fund that comes up with it. So. That's really, in a nutshell, what that was. Um, and does anybody have any questions about what it was? Well, it seems to me that um, one easy improvement for bicyclists and pedestrians um, isn't considered here, and that is just dropping the speed limit on Park Street. Um, Sweet Home has a 25 mile per hour speed limit all the way through the town where the highway is wide and it's much safer to speed if you're going to do that. Um, but with Park Street, uh, we have, I think, 30 miles per hour and the cars go 40 miles per hour. So, you know, if we could just get the speed dropped and um, enforcement uh, by a speed camera, if there are no police available to do that, it would help a lot. Sure, and, and we've, we've actually looked at that with ODOT, uh, reducing the speed on that. 
and it's never never uh, been below the 85th percentile to do that. So speeds aren't randomly set. Uh, there's got to be a mechanism to where uh, you follow state standards. And, and if most people are driving what we call the 85th percentile, so, and I believe they've changed the percentile. I'll have to go back and look. But, but if most drivers are driving at a certain speed, certain percentage of drivers are the, the maximum, um, then that's what your speed limit is, right? Because most drivers are gonna drive it at a comfortable speed, and that may be five to 10 miles an hour over what you think it should be. Uh, so that's what they set the, set the speed limits at. Um, so that's why you see that at 30 miles an hour, because that's how that came out that way. Well, I know that's an old fashioned way of looking at things. And I think even ODOT's literature says that. And um, that, yeah, I, I'm not sure that's justifiable. Okay, well, um, I'm just telling you how we do it. So that's that we, we, we follow state law. I don't have the authority to set speed limits, especially on a state highway. And we've looked at it multi multiple times. So uh, beyond that, um, you know, we've had multiple complaints on it. Um, and our police department does do enforcement on it. So, and if we did a speed camera on it, it would require uh, basically ODOT to allow that and install that speed camera. Because mm -hmm. we don't have jurisdiction on the highway. Well, just as um, speeds are set to please car drivers, it seems like maybe bicycle routes should be chosen to please bicyclists. And so I wonder why 2nd Street and Williams aren't given more attention. Well, Williams, we, we opted not to put any kind of uh, bike route on the truck route. Uh, I don't think bikes and trucks mix at all. Uh, so we used 5th Street as our north route, north-south parallel route, and Grove Street uh, as the north-south that they can use uh, associated with the highway. Um, putting them on 2nd Street, you've got a lot of parking on both sides of the street. You've got high volumes of traffic. So we tried to pick streets that weren't as high volume of traffic for bikes, um, for, for bike lanes. And bikers can follow the rules of the road and ride with traffic. Too. So if they choose to do a different a different route than that, but for a dedicated for a family, I'll call it a family biking affair. We've used Fifth Street and Grove Street for those. I think Linda's point is well taken on Park Street, but I, I recognize too that ODOT says what happens there because it is it is rather wide, and there's not a lot of like Main Street. There's a lot of things that slow you down because you're watching. So I. I your point is well taken, for I, sure. I think the project you'll see in the urban design verification, I believe, is to create a multi-use path on a big portion of it and take parking off of some of it at some point. But that again, there again, that that's the state that's going to do that. That's that's not the city of Lebanon that's going to do that. So we need to keep bugging ODOT. That's what I would. That's where I would start. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, and on the, I, I actually live on Fifth Street, and and Fifth Street. And I, I do things on second as well, and I think fifth is a good choice. Um, it's already got a lot of bike second. lanes, mm -hmm. and it's wide in mm -hmm. places, and and that. So, um, if I had to choose, I would choose fifth over second, even though it's a little farther over. But you would choose fifth because you live on fifth. For no. a, a lot of residents, it's far away. Well, I would choose fifth because it's less busy. Um, that's why I would choose fifth. I, I do both. I run and I bike and all that. And fifth is, a, I'm a lot less worried on fifth than on second. So um, wouldn't matter where I lived. Um, and you do see a lot of bikes and pedestrians there for that reason. All right, fifth street lot. It's the safest one. And I cross town and get into the back street where it's a little safer, where you're not with traffic. So yeah. I wouldn't want to, even if there was a bike, bike lane on Park Street, I wouldn't ride my bike on it. Yeah, there, there's a lot of traffic there, and people do race to the corner. We see it. Oh, yeah. and there's we, a reason that the chamber has been yes, <laughs> agreed, <laughs> invaded a couple times. <laughs> and, and, and unfortunately, the people that are speeding are speeding well over the speed limit, and changing the speed limit isn't really... It, the, the people that you're changing the speed limit for are the people that are driving between 30 and 35. The people that you want to try and target because they're way over aren't going to pay attention to that anyway. 
the only thing that works there is enforcement. So at least that's what we've found. So. Other other thoughts on the UDV? I I have one additional. I have, I appreciate the thought of an enhanced crossing at some point right where the where the roads go apart there at the yes. Y. That uh, I see people. I see people, and I've done it myself, playing uh, Frogger to get across there. So, appreciate and one that. of the one of the things with that crossing is it would eliminate probably the left turn lane onto Elmore Street. So you wouldn't be able to turn left there, which a lot of people use to cut over to Second Street to avoid the whole Park and Oak uh, intersection. So that would be a, that would be a definite change. But I think that's a beneficial change um, to do that. Okay. Street tree planting project. Linda, that's something you had on there. All right. This concerns the Lebanon Garden Club. The Lebanon Garden Club has grown a lot lately. There are over 60 members. And that means even though the dues are only $15 a year, um, we now have a little bit of money to spend on community projects. So I would like to invite Karen Berger, a representative of the club, to talk about this idea. Come on up to the microphone. They'll get you set there. Yeah. Or stand up. Uh, sit down. You're easier to hear there. So. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. She and I sit on the Lebanon Garden Club together, and I'm the second vice president and a spokesperson for the Garden Club. And as Linda, uh, Linda had mentioned, we've been, in, we've been in business since 1937, but the membership had fluctuated from 10 people up to 25 people. But this last year and a half, we've grown to 60. We're very excited about that, but we got a lot of people to try to get busy doing stuff and give them a purpose for being in the club besides just listening to all the rest of us talk. So... Uh, we formed a community service project committee. Uh, Linda and I sit on that committee, and um, it's our job to look at projects in the community and bring the recommendations to the um, Garden Club itself for approval. And we set aside some money, uh, not a lot. <laughs> we only have one fundraiser a year. Uh, but hopefully, you know, if we can get more involved in the community and get more involved with the city, uh, and we can look at funding uh, more uh, uh, projects in the city, then uh, we can look at doing some other additional fundraisers because there are people that are willing to step up. We just need to have a focus and a goal. Um, Linda had let me know about the Parks, Trees, and Trails program that you have because we've had a conversation about street trees. And there are a number of us who are very excited about street trees uh, in that vein, we, uh, our small committee set up a grant for schools for Arbor Day to see if they'd like to apply uh, for some funds to help support an Arbor Day project for their school. And we got a, one great response already of an, a school who wants, who's already planning to put in four um, fire maples along the side of their school to kind of mitigate the, the sun. Uh, and they've got, it's a fifth grade group and there's 50 kids and they're excited and we're excited to have them apply for the grant. So we're going to be helping them, guiding them, uh, giving them a little bit of money and also being there to promote uh, gardening and, and uh, have them develop some ownership of, of, those, uh, of this project. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, you know, we're starting a little, but um, I, I wanted to come here on behalf of the Garden Club to talk to you about the trees, the street tree program that you have going and um, see if we can be involved in that. Uh, I don't know what, what level. We have, we have various ages, but most of us are retired, <laughs> so we're not going to get into a backhoe. <laughs> dig a hole. <laughs> well, I don't know, some of them might, but <laughs> not too many. Um, we're, but, but we're very enthusiastic about street trees and wanting to participate uh, in any way that we possibly can. So uh, I, I'm here to introduce myself with regard to that. Um, 
you know, we've been doing some other small projects in the community. We put a raised bed in at a school. They needed a, a, a new raised bed. Um, we did some uh, plantings at the Boys and Girls Club on Fifth Street. And uh, we've done some, we provided expenses for the horticulture program for the high school. And uh, we are also funding a tree for the cemetery. Once you guys get the water in, uh, we're going to dig a hole and put a tree there. <laughs> and uh, so there's, Linda's already had, been in conversation with you about that. So we're excited. Um, we just really, really want to participate. And I, do, you, do you have any questions? Uh, how, can, how can we serve? Uh, please give us some feedback. How, let, let how me did you get up to 60 people? What was, what was the... the We're what? just wonderful group of ladies. Well, I, I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure that's <laughs> true. But was there any... Well, pa there any part, of it, part of it has been that there was kind of a waning of enthusiasm for a while with garden clubs. And mm -hmm. some of the garden clubs, the Sweet Home uh, Garden Club closed. You know, they just didn't have... They had a lot of older women and, you know, there was a die-off factor and they didn't right. have any uh, leadership anymore. So they kind of, you know, went by the wayside and some of their folks are now in our club. Uh, but we also, um, just, by, just by the nature of who we are and the fact that we're actually participating in the community is making a lot of difference to people. So they come as a guest and go, oh, they're doing some cool things and... Uh, they're having some great classes that we can learn, and, and there's a lot more enthusiasm now around uh, planting and food preparation and uh, schools getting involved, involved in horticulture. And my gosh, we're right in the middle of that whole horticulture thing, you know, in the world. We're, we're doing great stuff. So there's been that kind of enthusiasm and buy-in, and we're getting uh, younger uh, members and uh, now, you know, I, I see as part of the leadership group, I see, you know, it's a very kind, fun, mm -hmm. non-political <laughs> place to go and learn something and socialize. We don't meet very often. Mm -hmm. um, it's inexpensive to belong. Uh, but now it's our job as leadership to try to provide some opportunities for people to have ownership in the community as well as... Uh, as well as just having ownership uh, of the club. So, you know, we've, we've developed a logo where you've got shirts and aprons. And <laughs> mm -hmm. so uh, I wish I could tell you exactly what the formula is, but that, that's caused us to grow, but it's all of, the, all of what I just mentioned, and we're very, we're very excited about it. It's really the, terrific. The strange thing. thing is that the jump in membership occurred after we stopped advertising the meetings. We wanted to keep the numbers down so that we could sit six feet apart and more people just came and came and came. So it has something to do with the pandemic. I'm not sure what. Yeah, well, maybe, yeah, maybe some people were just tired. Karen, do you want to talk about the details that we've tentatively discussed or do you want me to do that? Um, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Um, so we thought of starting with perhaps a thousand dollars and planting in the fall, just because that's the best time. Uh, so this might be ten trees or fewer. Uh, we talked about possibly William Street, though it could start almost anywhere. But William Street has nice wide planting strips, very few trees. Um, it's a major route that really needs traffic calming. On the east side, there are no wires at all. So um, that's just what we had in mind. Uh, we thought we might um, start by actually visiting the homes. And um, if people are interested, giving them a letter, a sort of contract to sign, which would have to be signed by both tenant and homeowner if they're separate people. Um, uh, we could um, we have to figure out how to place the trees and work, figure out how to work with a city on that. Um, I'm thinking maybe we could put stakes in and the city could make sure they were in okay places. Uh, selection of the trees is another question. Perhaps the city could recommend a nursery and also tell, tell us where to buy tubes and stakes, which are required. Um, and that's about it. Yeah. Okay. Jason, what, 
how would the best way for them to approach you guys for assistance in, you know, finding out where to get things, what to do, where you can plant, where you can't plant? What's what's the best way for them to so approach you, the city? Where you can and can't plant, that would be uh, Shanna Olson in engineering. Yeah, we would we would we would look at that. So a couple of <clears> things: <throat> make sure the homeowner's on board with it. Um, I like your idea of traffic calming on William Street, although I do have concern about the narrowness of it and the trees getting damaged from trucks. So mm -hmm. uh, that would be something to keep in mind when you were doing that. Um, I, I think the big trees, probably not so much, but as, they, as they're as they short and the canopy's short, they're gonna mm -hmm. get probably, you know, uh, hit by hit by that. So- A little bit of, little bit of my history. Um, I born and raised Oregonian and I spent 40 years in Troutdale and I was on the Tr Troutdale City Council and also the Parks Department and and uh, I was kind of spearheaded the tr street tree program that we have and that we had in downtown Troutdale. I'm no longer, I'm 11, I'm a Lebanon <laughs> resident now and I'm very excited, love this little place. But uh, I, you know, there's, I went through a whole bunch of issues with what would work on traffic streets and you know calming devices and that sort of thing and i i kind of you know as linda had mentioned um there's been a conversation about williams but i also saw a map and i'm not sure where i saw it of some locations that were recommended for street trees was that my imagination i i'm not sure where that map came from <laughs> okay well, it when you find like it I, take I, it to I, it I saw yeah, something. To yeah so, yeah. yeah. Well, maybe you, I created it. Yeah. If you find it again, please let us yeah, know. Yeah. Well, I, so. maybe I should make one. <laughs> I don't know. And I, but, yeah. And I do know we have a list of approved, you know, street tree species. Um, and as far as right. equipment, you know, uh, the tubes and the stakes, we could definitely get with you guys and, and partner up and, and supply some of that. Well, so. I just, you know, I see this as an opportunity for a lot of, of, of really enthusiastic people to support yeah. what you're doing and we're working together and collaborating yeah. and going along with the guidelines and, you know, just, you know, following the rules and, and uh, maybe we just focus on one little small area, maybe a, you know, a couple of blocks and we go around that and we plant some trees and get a little publicity so everybody gets enthusiastic and then, you know, and then it grows from there. Yeah. Uh, that's how I see it. That's how I envision. Yeah. Another uh, idea may be we have the program where we go take out some problem street trees and, and fix sidewalk areas. And I know a lot of that stems from maybe not the right tree being planted in the area. And right. that might be an, uh, a partnership we could do so that when we take out a tree and then we could give, the homeowner your guys' information and if that's something that they want to look into is partnering with you guys and putting in a more appropriate tree after we get it taken out and the sidewalk fixed that might be a good partnership as well well and we might be a better um a better advocate for mm -hmm. the program just simply because we're not the city and you know yeah. some people get a little bit well the city's not going to tell me what to do uh but you know you get a bunch of <laughs> never <laughs> happens <laughs> right never happens but you know you get a little old ladies knocking on your door and handing you some tulips what are you gonna do <laughs> well, and a lot of those homeowners are you know we try to help out with the costs of taking the tree out taking the sidewalk out and then they have to pay for the the, the sidewalk um you know in you know yeah. repair and installation so they're kind of may, maybe already tapped for fun so a little bit of help and some guidance might be a a welcome relief for them. Well, so. we might be able to support uh, support the process with maybe looking into some small grants too. Yeah. That so. uh, that can support people in fixing their sidewalks because you know my husband, uh, he's broken his hand walking down yeah. one of those sidewalks and it's not pretty. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I think there's some things that we can we can put our heads together, be creative, and we've got lots of people resources. So with lots of people with great ideas, and I just, I would just love to see a creative collaboration yeah. with you guys. It's, it's nice that you're coming now, because like Linda said, this isn't the time to plant, the time to, but you got time to plan sure. quite a bit of time now. So any other comments or questions? Well, you know, I, I love trees and I <clears throat> appreciate what you're doing, but you know, we have so much problem with the trees raising the sidewalks, including my neighbor's trees, <coughs> right? Raising my driveway. Um, is it? You said there's certain trees that 
don't yeah. get the roots more superficial? I, I can speak to that um, from what I've done over the last 20 years. Um, it's a lot of times it's the wrong tree in the wrong spot, just like what Jason said. There's trees that like to do that, um, and there's trees that don't. And it's pretty scientific these days. Um, you don't see a lot of new plants doing that um, because we know what the trees are typically going to do. Nothing's there, 100%. There's, but. there's one species that we worked with that um, it, it's a very columnar tree. Mm -hmm. It goes it goes tall and very very green, but it's very narrow, so it doesn't you know doesn't make a lot of room, and it doesn't lift the sidewalks. The roots go down low, and we were really successful in planting those trees on high traffic streets. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and you know, 20, 30, 40 years ago, they didn't know all of that, so it's a lot better. Not that it won't ever. Yeah, so you know, I, walnut trees in. No. Don't you know, I even see some of the trees downtown that I'm surprised people haven't scratched the cornea of their eyes walking by them because some of them are pretty close and even short people like me. Yeah. The other important factor is the width of the planting strip. Yep. And the reason I suggested Williams is because they're, they're eight feet wide on most of that street between Grant and Wheeler which is very important. Any other thoughts? We applaud what you're doing. Thank um, you. And We're appreciate excited. That. And I, <laughs> I, for one, have I have a neighbor that's been in the garden club for years, and I benefit from what she does in her yard all the time. So um, thank oh, you. Yes. Well, don't come to my house and try to benefit, because my I got more weeds and flowers in <laughs> <laughs> So um, to go further, we should talk with Jason and Jason and Shanna. Is that correct? Is that is that probably the next step yeah. on that? Okay. Yeah. It, if you're going to coordinate anything, coordinating through Jason is fine. So yeah. so really, all Shanna is going to do is issue permits, and yeah. we can do there. We can do a no charge permit on something yeah. like this. And I will warn: some places we take trees out, we we don't want them to go back because sure. of the way the utilities got put in, and we don't want to run into those messes yeah. anymore with the tree over top of a water line or sewer line so sure. and i well, passed i gave you my card so you, you did can, but you yeah. didn't give me my your home number and address <laughs> oh, and well, sorry. <laughs> so we can go and you know pick at your house or whatever we're supposed to yeah. do we won't get do that. You that after the meeting <laughs> <laughs> well thank you for opportunity to to hear me talk thank you for coming we appreciate we're looking it. looking forward to a, a partnership i think this will be really fun and i'm i'm really eager to go back to the club and say okay how many people like street trees? Raise your hand. <laughs> All right. Great. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Anything, any other questions? Okay. I, I live over um, on the other side of the tracks on, uh, you know, second and Mary <laughs> next, next to the university. And we really need some trees there. So just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Linda, the next item's you too. Um, yeah, sort of, but not really. Um, I just um, sent on this um, email because um, because I got it and I wanted to be sure that the staff and the community had all seen it um, about the Oregon Department of Forestry mm -hmm. adding um, new employees who could help cities with a paragraph in bold face about the and employee software free to Oregon cities and towns. It says the advantages. Microphone on, sorry. It says the advantages that everyone can compare their trees to every other community in Oregon using the software. This will help us get a better understanding of what trees are doing well where and which are struggling. This improves our ability to make region specific recommendations on what to plant. It also helps cities and towns see more precisely what their risk from tree pests and diseases is. That's, I'm glad you brought that up because um, that software is very good. That could be an opportunity for volunteers. I, the city is not gonna have the resources to have somebody out doing all those trees. Um, Albany did their trees two years ago and the year before. Or at this point, which is helpful for grants, it's helpful for a lot of things and just knowing what you have. So um, I don't know if somebody, you know, people, that are interested in garden club trees might be interested in something like that. It takes a little bit of training. And I know that um, Jay Sharp, who is the city forester in Albany, 
would be glad to provide some of that training um, if that was something that the city wanted to do and had volunteers to, to do. And I also want to point out that uh, Scott Altenhoff is a good, is a, is a very dedicated guy, um, worked for the city of Eugene for a long time, and, uh, and also um, some of the others, Jennifer Killian, um, I've run into her, uh, she was Corvallis Forester for a number of years. So they've got some good things going there, um, but I, I can't see a city that's cutting back having time to have paid staff do, um, do street tree inventory, but it, it actually is very interesting for the people that, that do it. So not to volunteer Lebanon that, but um, that's something to think about um, if somebody's interested. It would have to be interest-based because you guys don't have any resources that do something like that. Thank you. I'll look around for a volunteer or two. Um, anything else on that item? Okay, BLT. Who's going to talk BLT parks, trees, and trails discussion topics? So let's start with BLT. Um, well, what I was hoping is the city would give us an update on all the trail projects that they got going because there's lots of them. And, uh, and can you do that, Ron? Sure. Um, so Gills Landing, the Gills Landing Connector Trail, we got plans from Brian this week and are putting together the special provisions for that uh, along with the contract. And we already have authorization to bid. Uh, so we're going to throw that out as soon as we, I think there was a couple of changes uh, Galen recommended or additions to the plans. And then we'll get that out here in the next week or two and uh, get bids for that and get it awarded. Um, the River Park Trail, we're still waiting on UDL to finish up the survey and finish up the design on that, and then we'll get that one going. Um, and we just met right before I came to this meeting to discuss the multi-use path. Uh, we met with utility companies on uh, Airport Road there between 7th and uh, Burkhart Creek. Um, we are going to, I think there's three or four poles that we've already had moved once. We're going to move them back again. And I think what our plan is at this point is where those poles are, uh, narrow the path uh, to nine feet instead of 10. And we'll have 10 through there uh, rather than go to try get, to get easements. Uh, there was a couple of property owners that we probably weren't going to get an easement from. And the cost to go underground is just atrocious. Um, so that's what we're going to do with that. Uh, I can't think of any other trails. Oh, Beaten Lane. Beaten Lane, sorry. Uh, Beaten Lane is almost done except for a couple of signs. So the crossing uh, is done and up. I know uh, our inspector was out there today and uh, making sure the signage worked, uh, the, the rapid flashing beacons worked. And uh, I think we've got a couple more little signs that uh, didn't get put into the, uh, the drawings that they've got to put up. But short of that, yeah, we should be good on that. Great. Anything in Cedar Lake? Uh, so Brian and Jason Williams and I met a couple, three weeks ago, and uh, I was hoping to have an update, uh, an updated um, scope uh, for you, a scoping plan, uh, but Brian's still a couple weeks out, so it'll have to be on our next meeting. Um, so, but we are moving forward with that as, as time allows. And uh, while, while I'm thinking about it, and is, is the, the Wheeler Street, uh, there was a project that you're looking at for next year? Oh, Wheeler? Uh, yeah, it's it's on the uh, list. Um, it's an ST, STP, SDC project uh, to do the path and whatnot up there, and we will get to that. It's got some, I think it's, I want to say it's, I think it had almost 100% eligibility for SDC, so, yeah. but it is in the, it is in the, uh, the in the works. Uh, I just got to have uh, somebody freed up to do it, um, but we'll, We'll get to that. Yeah, I just am impressed and I'm very thankful for all the work that the staff's been doing on the trails. Uh, it makes, I don't have to talk as long because you're doing so much that you've taken on. And the other thing that, uh, so all those projects we've talked about and now the key, the one that we're, Old Lemon Trails is doing their main fundraiser for now is the George Pacific uh, Mill Race Trail. 
So this this one trail is gonna is gonna connect our entire community. All those projects that that Ron's talking about and all the previous projects for the last 19 years, um, we're all coming together to make it so we're gonna have a continuous trail all the way from Cheetah Lake, Wyrick uh, Road area, uh, the south urban growth boundary all the way into the, into the north part of town. So uh, we're making some headway on that. Uh, the um, UDL Engineering is very, very busy and uh, we've, they've, uh, uh, taken on our project also to, to come up with construction ready plans. Well, co come up with conceptual plans, sorry, and cost estimates. And that should be due, uh, done in May, probably mid-May sometime, at which time then we'll uh, be able to, to go out again with a, with a firm figure. Right now we've estimated $350,000 for the project. And after meeting with Brian uh, uh, Vendetta, uh, he did some quick numbers to see if we're in the ballpark, and we are in the ballpark at 350,000. But you know, of course, there's always the extra add-ons that that could raise that, uh, like the bridge. That's a we think about 100 grand for the walk bridge, uh, but we haven't haven't seen those numbers yet. So we still expect to be building this in 2025. Uh, so that's right around the corner. Um, that's I think that's uh, a lot of trail projects going on at the same time. Was the intention on that bridge over the Albany Canal to use the same kind of rail car design? When you do that, um, will you see if they can do a different type of surfacing on that mm. to add to it somehow? Sure. Uh, I'm disappointed in the surfaces though on the ones that we got, uh, the, the two that we put in and the one. We, I mean, they function, but... Uh, I know we've had some issues with them, with with uh, toe catches and, and just different things. So if oh. there's something we can do to make that, I don't know if it, it would involve putting something over it, um, but after after seeing those for after a couple of years, I, I wish we would have maybe done a little bit different decking on it somehow. I don't know, mm. uh, but something to think about as sure. we're going through. They're a bit slippery too. Yeah, yeah, and we've tried a multitude of things to keep them from being slippery, and um, I don't know that we've been that successful. So, anyway, just something. To, yeah, I, I agree with you. There, there's some trippers on there. Yeah, yeah. And of course, uh, the city will get to review all the all the plans. Yeah. So prior to putting anything in, so we'll we'll, we'll mention it, and we'll uh, uh, always thankful for your review of the of the plans and go from there. It's about all we have other than on May 4th, where, um, well, always have work days going on, right? There's a lot of work days that, and, and trail things that are happening. Very thankful for Linco and all their volunteering, and they're gonna be out volunteering again for us on May 4th at the Cheetah Lake Fun Run and Kids Obstacle Dash. Um, I think we're up to like 100 volunteers or, uh, you know, I. Like, it's, there's a lot of volunteers. <laughs> so we're, we're doing pretty good at, at, at recruiting on that. I think I've got, uh, I don't know, I'm over 20 now just for the run. So uh, the other thing that uh, Build Up and Trails has, has been offered is on June 8th. Um, as many of you know that the Strawberry Century bike ride used to be for 30, 31 years, I think, uh, the San Diego Spokes or the, or the later called just Spokes Bicycle Club. Um, had that uh, event in our community and they weren't able to do it this year. So um, Trevor Spangle uh, has been, has some history with that event. He's taken that on and uh, he'll be running that event so we don't lose it, that a community event, but he's offered to have Build Up and Trails do a, uh, a family friendly bicycle ride where it'd be all led in small groups at slow pace so that all even the, even the young kids can can join along and, and ride on on the trail system, and uh, and then it's going to be inexpensive registration, fifteen dollars per person, and then uh, that I don't remember the name of their um, nonprofit, but um, they're going to donate all of that to to build Lemon Trails. So uh, that's coming up. If you want to uh, ride along with us, that'd be great. Uh, we're probably going to have a Hopefully about eight volunteers will be all we need for that because we're not having to mark the route uh, or promote it or do much planning, just kind of show up the day of and make it happen. So uh, Jan, anything else you wanted to add? No, 
Dave has been really good. He got 21 volunteers for our kids' obstacle dash, and we really do appreciate that because just the dash takes about 50 to 55 people, volunteers. We so. had a great time last year, so it's our pleasure. Yeah, it, it's a fun event. If you want to come out and just watch, it's, it's great. If you have grandkids or neighbor kids, they need to register online, run signup.com, or go to the BLT website, and it can direct you over to that site. And... The, due to some generous donors, the first 200 kids are free if you register and put dash capital letters in there. So it's a fun event. Perfect. And, and we have so many more 5 and 10K runners this year. 10K runners. I was really surprised. I looked today. I can't remember. 167, I think, registered so far. And maybe 63 of them are kids or 67 kids. Yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah. Thanks, hey. yeah. Anything else, Rod, from you? Probably is, but... Okay. okay. Well, let's go around and see. Cindy, you got anything? No? Really? <laughs> Nothing. Okay. I thought with Strawberry Festival coming up, you'd have something. Strawberry Festival's happening. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then we'll leave it at that. <laughs> We're working on the parking and the sale of the property next door. We're still figuring that out, but otherwise we're working on it. Okay. Great. Uh, Linda, you got anything else? I, I have a question. I didn't quite understand the part about Wheeler Street. Are we going to get a sidewalk on the north side of the street? Yeah, so there's there's a plan to put a multi-use path uh, from basically, what's the name of the park? Hat Irvine Park uh, back to the uh, uh, North William Street and make that connection there. So. It's in the uh, TSP and in the SEC plan. It's just a matter of having time to do it. Anything else, Linda? Dave, anything? I, uh, from a, a citizen of my ward, I got a question. And I, it's been a long time since I played basketball at night at Century Park. But he says, I'm not sure what the light situation is there. He said that he came there at 8 <coughs> o'clock or so and it was pitch dark. and so we're, I don't know. Is there a timer like there used to be in the old days? So there's... There's two buttons. Um, one will do the basketball side, and one does the tennis court side. Yeah, they used to both be. Are they both by the tennis court side, or? No, the one button I believe is on the front of the the control panel. Um, we're looking at upgrading those lights. The one of the issues, without getting too technical in the weeds, um, the electrical service there is isn't is a very old, odd service voltage wise. The lights that would work with that service are very expensive. Um, I mean, three to four times more expensive than the normal lights we get. So we're working with the power company to see what it's going to take to get a more up-to-date electrical service on that so that we can save some money on the lights. And then further down the road, we'd be able to replace them with something better. So we we're, gotcha. we're actively working on getting the new lights. And once we get the new lights, it will spur getting a new different control system so but right now there's because at least when i was a kid you push a button it stayed on for a certain amount of time and then they went off and you had yeah. to push the button again yep and and that's so kind of we goof around until the lights came back <clears throat> it's one of those things uh we don't want to upgrade what we have there right now not knowing what we're going to be upgrading the lights to again so. I, I think the citizen was under the impression that there was no mechanism to turn them on yeah, I thought, there I should think there be, is. and I. But I he sent, probably just didn't look at the right place, so I'll, I'll yeah. go scout it out. And, and maybe we need to. We had some signs out there. We didn't have anything permanent, and people vandalize things. <laughs> so the signs might be gone. I'll I'll make sure our building maintenance guy goes out and takes another look and make sure everything's working. Okay, great. I had him kind of ramp up at the beginning of spring to make sure everything was working, and he reported it all working correctly as far as he could tell. Okay, I'll pass it on. Yeah. And the other. The other thing is, I guess I'm kind of a citizen in this one because it's more a Linco issue. The, uh, we, uh, took, we adopted the trail, and I talked to Lynn about this a little bit, and at one point we said we would help spread gravel on that trail. I'm having a real hard time with all that's going on at Linco and our other commitments getting an army of people to do that. So I'd be glad to help, but I guess I need some guidance or some, uh, somebody to help me to figure out how to do that because I don't... We don't have the manpower at Lebanon to take wheelbarrows and cover that trail. We just don't. Uh, there, even 20 of us are not going to ever accomplish that. And it looks like a big task. So I'd be, I'm wide open to helping, to recruiting, but I don't even know how to start eating that elephant right now. 
you know, I think we probably need to get a, a work day scheduled in the future and get some equipment out there mm -hmm. and uh, have move all the rock with equipment. You know, it's a small tractor. Uh, we've got a couple of people that have some small equipment that I'm sure we could get to come out there and, and, uh, and move the rock. So maybe we could partner with BLT on a work day and there yeah. would still be some Lin Linco, the way we do it, we, we have a lot of volunteer opportunities and they're quarterly and the spring quarter is, is especially since we're doing the, is we don't have a whole lot of opportunities left. They're just Linco volunteer opportunities until end of summer. Yeah. And it, ideal, I think we'd like to get the gravel on that trail as probably as soon as possible. So I think there's some out there and I walk it, it could probably use it. Yeah, you know, I just got to be thankful for all the work you're already doing out there. Uh, you know, that trail is definitely in, in a much better trail than it ever was uh, prior to your group coming out. And even degirthing all the ivy that, you, that you're starting to do as, as projects. When I walk that trail, it's wide, it's open. So, you know, some of, the, some of the people in our community really prefer a soft surface trail, and that's kind of our soft surface trail. Mm -hmm. So I'm not as concerned about the gravel being down, uh, seeing as that it floods every, every yeah. winter. Uh, and I mean, it doesn't damage it when it floods. It, it may make it a little more muddy, but and you can't use it unless you want to get your feet wet. But I think we have a lot of time to do that. In fact, we want to get some uh, different gravel and dumped on each end uh, okay. when we have the plan to have the equipment there. Well, maybe when it gets to the, a plan where it, it becomes imperative to you or important to you, just let us know and we'll, we'll participate any way we can. Yeah, great. I'll, I'll bring it up to the board and we'll kind of put it as one of our possible projects to partner with you on it. I, I felt bad that I kind of stepped into that and then we haven't gotten to it. No, please don't feel bad about that. <laughs> we haven't got it done either. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the two things I had questions. Okay, Jan, you have anything else? Okay, do we have any public comments? Anything from the public? They're not moving. You do? Okay, come on up. I was waiting for somebody to... Now the red light should be on for the microphone to be on. So. Yeah. Um, anyway, um, I'm Jim McKinnon. I just volunteer. I am. I do a lot of volunteering for Bill Levin and Trails, and uh, and I'm a. A uh, adopt a park uh, person also with the with the city. So um, it did anyway. Uh, what I had what came up in the meeting today was uh, uh, I've had a lot of people uh, talk to me about doesn't Lebanon have a garden tour? And um, uh, I have. I've traveled uh, quite a bit into the Seattle area and up in the uh, Sound and and you know and around this area going to garden tours and uh, Lebanon is is sitting here as far as I'm concerned with uh, a, a big opportunity. I know it's a, a huge volunteer issue uh, for uh, home tours and things like that, but. Uh, Garden tours, uh, you know, you don't really have to worry so much about people walking with dirty feet in there, uh, if you're all gardeners, anyway. But uh, anyway, I just thought that uh, since we had the garden people here, that uh, it would be nice to uh, 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 es establish some kind of a garden tour for people to come come to Lebanon and, and uh, see the community and... and uh, uh, have some pizza or something. We're having a conversation about that in the planning process. So it's, Way ahead of me. I, I am because that's who I am. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. And uh, uh, I have uh, uh, tree posts, you know, for the trees that are planted uh, that are, uh, that we have taken out. And I'm not sure just who owns those. Uh, whether uh, Mr. Uh, um, John uh, Dingus owns those posts. But anyway, I've saved them instead of letting them go into the burn pile. And uh, a lot of them are full full length, and I'd like to turn those over to the city 
or whoever whoever might want them uh, and get them uh, off my property <laughs> so, so they can do some good. Yeah, Jim, just let us know. We can pick them up or drop them off, or you could drop them off, and we'd be happy to take them and then use them if we partner with the Garden Club for the street trees. That'd be great. Sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, I'll do that. You got, you got my contact info, so let me know. Yeah, okay. So, all right. Yeah. And uh, anyway... Perfect. Uh, Any questions? That's just uh, for me. Just a little more praise because uh, everybody knows how much everybody that works for the city or that's been around Jim knows how much he does. Uh, he he's the guy that's out there by himself with a push lawnmower mowing along the sides of the trails or <laughs> cleaning up trash along the roads. I mean. We're, Thank you, Jim. We're amazed every time Jim turns in his his report on how much he's how much water he's used watering trees out there. He'll turn it in, and we look at it and go, "Man, this is one guy <laughs> and that much water." So, thank you, Jim. That's great. Thanks, Jim. Appreciate it. Okay, our next scheduled meeting, if we need it, is May fifteenth. Don't know where we're going to be on that. And last time, as soon as I hit this, people had things to say. So are y'all done talking? Because 